In the 18th century, the mentally retarded were often ignored, punished, and exploited. Today, things are supposed to be different. The children, as they are all called, who are rotting in their cages, cribs, and beds, can thank society for their dreadful plight. Penhurst Asylum, Spring City, Pennsylvania. Officially known as Penhurst State School and Hospital, this property was originally named the Eastern Pennsylvania State Institution for the Feeble-Minded and Epileptic. For 79 years, these buildings housed thousands of the mentally and physically disabled. On November 23, 1908, the first patient was admitted, and by 1912, the facility was overcrowded. Yes, our rated capacity is 1984, 1,984. How many people do you have? We currently have 2,791. The retarded have been ignored, forgotten, and pushed out of our minds much too long. In some cases, their feeling of being abandoned has stunned their progress. Others have just become more bitter. Do you have a lot of visitors, Calvin? No, I don't have nobody to be here. It's not bad. I mean, I've been in this now this is Tuesday when I came here from Viber. I was a little baby. When was the last time you had a visitor here? 1940. At the time, the mentally ill were considered a blight on society, to be feared and not allowed to associate with the general population. A Pinhurst chief physician, Dr. Henry H. Goddard, even said, quote, Every feeble-minded person is a potential criminal." Unquote. Society's view on those feeble-minded essentially excused unspeakable horrors to be exercised in the halls and rooms of Penhurst. In 1968, reporter Bill Baldini exposed conditions at the facility in a five-part local broadcast news investigation which aired on WCAU NBC10. It would take indictments and a federal class action lawsuit to finally close the facility on December 9, 1987. From that lawsuit, even more details were exposed about Penhurst. Urine and excrement on ward floors, infectious diseases, obnoxious odors, excessive noise. Commonplace were injuries to residents by other residents or self-abuse. Residents were seriously injured and sexually assaulted by staff members. Residents were physically restrained, which often caused injury and at least one death. Restraint usage increased because there wasn't enough staff for the amount of residents. Dangerous psychotropic drugs were used for behavior control and staff convenience. During my few hours at Penhurst, it was easy to feel a deep sadness in the air. Perhaps it was brought on by the decaying buildings, slowly being reclaimed by nature, and weary of the evil that they concealed for so many years. But these buildings are no comparison to the lives that decayed here. Neglected, abused, tortured for decades. Thousands of lives. Definite change in here.
Guys, I'm coming to you from Pennhurst Asylum. And I'm in the basement of Magnolia Hall right now. Very uh, creepy place, to say the least. During my brief visit, I captured several disembodied voices. And this happened while filming B-roll. Right now I'm in the basement of Mayflower Hall. Listen as my camera peers down a narrow passageway. As I step back, a male whisper can be heard. Did you catch that? Listen closely again. Someone appears to whisper, we're coming with you. I physically was alone, and I know that I didn't whisper anything. Here's an old cart in the hallway in Mayflower. Couldn't help myself. Had to try to move it around a little bit, but the wheels were rusted solid. Again, a whisper, which sounds exactly like the previous male voice. Listen closely. Sounds like he whispered, leave that here. This was known as the soundproof room. Totally alone in the basement, it was difficult to be soundproof, walking around on decades of debris that had built up on the floor. But then there was this. Did you catch that? Clearly, that sounds like a breath or an exhale, and it didn't come from me. Here, I'm in one of the few underground tunnels accessible to the public. After I invite anyone to speak into the mic, there's a sound that's too weird to ignore. Did you hear it? Let's listen again. To me, that voice, as creepy as it sounds, seems to say it's recording. No other evidence was collected via photographs, video, or the SB7 spirit box. Today, the property is used for paranormal investigations and conventions, and also a huge haunted attraction. Brianna Walters, a volunteer for Paracon 2019, shared her experiences. I was here on a ghost hunt from like 7 p.m. to like 3 a.m. on Friday the 13th, and we were in the soundproof room, and we asked um, someone to bang on the wall door, and the, one of the doors down here slammed three times in a row. Um, another time I was at a power, the Paracon here, and I was back here with my sister near the janitor room. She saw a light yeah. flash by. I heard a sound and I just ran out. <laughs> Paranormal investigators Stephen Urquintello and Giselle Andrews are first timers to Pinhurst. I asked Stephen about his experiences with the paranormal. Quite a bit of experiences, um, personally and actually documented on Amazon Prime, on, on YouTube, on my you know personal social media pages as well. So. I mean, I can go into all of that, like, I mean, the shadow figures that I've seen, the EVPs that I've documented that are all actually, you know, you can go watch them again 
and I mean that's kind of what brought me here first one first time I know Katrina you know she kind of addressed some things that I did on her show portals to hell that I did at Maggie's so I thought it'd be cool just to come and see her and talk to her about that so I thought that was really cool that she knew recognized who I was knew who I was thought that was really interesting and I think that was kind of the main reasoning to come kind of see Katrina and just see what this type of lifestyle was about rather than being behind the camera and you know entertaining I guess but also documenting Giselle shared some of her experiences. This guy's really like extreme in everything that he does and the few times that I've gone places with him, I've definitely experienced a lot of things and um, come home to experience more things. I think Katrina touched upon Bobby Mackey's being something that followed her home and I can definitely attest to that. The kind of like the spiritual hangovers that we kind of experience afterwards. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've seen some things and seen some shadows and things like that, but um, I feel a lot of things when it comes to like the paranormal. So what exactly makes Penhurst an unexplained case? It's opening and closing certainly isn't. Even the horrors that went on here really aren't, especially considering the times and human nature. What makes this an unexplained case is, if it's truly haunted, who still lingers here and why? As for if Penhurst is haunted, well, Brianna Walters thinks so. Oh yes, yes, definitely. Reporting for Unexplained Cases, I'm Rick Garner.